everyone so welcome to travel with Hassan and this is the first podcast that I am going to share with you so we had an amazing discussion about cultural and social integration this is one of the very important issues that is being faced by the Pakistani and all the people who come from foreign countries uh, who come from their home countries to a foreign land so listen and stick to this uh, interview we have uh, by the way we will also post um, audio version of this on um, SoundCloud and link will be down below so please do check the audio version up as well if you can't stick to YouTube for one hour and uh, yeah enjoy the podcast so uh, welcome to the first podcast of travel with Hassan today I'm hosting this show and this is my first podcast and today with me is my co-host Mr. Numan Ahmed Okay, so today we have a very special guest with us. Uh, on my right side, this is Simo. He's a, my really good friend and my classmate. And uh, he's doing uh, his master in biomedicine. And our second guest is... Our second guest is Muhammad Asim Qureshi. He is a PhD in social sciences. And he is joining us today, especially he traveled to mm-hmm. down, from Tampere to Kyopio. So, Asim, welcome to our first podcast. Thank you. Okay, so the topic of our podcast is a very familiar and very common issue that is being faced by the foreigners these days and that is social and cultural integration. We are going to talk about the social integration, cultural integration and cultural shock because uh, to be honest, I am being honest today when I came uh, when I arrived in Finland, this was a total cultural shock for me because the culture here is very different as compared to what we have in Pakistan. So, my first question from you because you both belong to different fields um, and you are from Finland as well, so your opinion is also very uh, important uh, value for us to know. So, how would you define what our culture is for you? What the culture for me is uh, are established practices and traditions exhibited by certain ethnic groups that mm-hmm. uh, in time emerge and manifest by mm-hmm. as certain practices. All right. And uh, Mohammed Esam Kureshi, being a, a scientist, what is your definition of culture? Well, again, I, I can give a very academic definition, but I, I, don't, I don't think that's useful. I completely agree with what you said, except that I wouldn't mark it as a form of ethnic expression. It's okay. I wouldn't term it as you know, something that evolves out of some sort of ethnic commonality, uh, but more of a geography, more of a society, and it eventually becomes into, as you said, mm-hmm. forms of mores, forms of habits, forms of rituals that are continued through generations that carry some sort of meaning, some sort of narration, some sort of message from one generation to another. And I do uh, agree with that as well. And I partially concede the ethnic part, but I do think that the ethnicity is also important. All right, okay. Thank you. Okay, so uh, that is very interesting to know that how you guys define the culture. Uh, so uh, I, as far as I know, uh, cultural integration is a structured process and it takes effort from the government, from the system, from the people to integrate the minorities and the other people who are coming as a foreigners, as a students or um, planning to live here to integrate them in the society. So being a, a Finnish native uh, person, what do you think that Finland is doing up to mark um, uh, things or steps to integrate the foreigners or minorities into the Finnish society? That is actually a very difficult question Mm -hmm. because I haven't personally followed these uh, uh, integrative steps that the Finnish government uh, takes place. I have seen many uh, not so positive examples how uh, government does it, uh, especially for certain immigrants and refugees. Uh, like some children's songs or giving very super superficial introduction about our culture is and means. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
but nevertheless, uh, if we give a certain more in-depth and meaningful examples, like the closeness with nature, uh, being outside uh, along with nature, that could be more beneficial. But uh, I'm sorry that I cannot give a better explanation. Mm -hmm. So might be I can rephrase this part for you and make it easy. Uh, do you have some good friends, as Juman is one of your very good friends, uh, and you might have come across with other foreigners as well. Uh, so if I put it simply, uh, what would you think that these people who came as a foreigners, they have integrated well, and uh, can you consider them to be a part of Finnish society, or they are still not, um, uh, they are still in the segregated groups and they, they cannot be uh, included as one unit, you know, what I'm trying to say. Can I add something to that? Yeah, That's please. a very good question. So, how would you define cultural integration through your experiences and everything? Uh, for me, uh, the aspect of culture, as it is tied along partially with society, mm -hmm. uh, the nation, and a certain base as well, with, uh, ethnicity. Uh, it, a little bit uh, hurts me to say this, but um, immigrants cannot ever be completely integrated mm -hmm. in society. And it is also because uh, with their own ethnicity and their uh, own experience, what they consider mm -hmm. themselves as their own, mm -hmm. as how I experience what I consider as my own. Yeah. And uh, that's why this idea of cultural integration will never be complete, but I do believe, believe that the people that immigrate here, nevertheless, can be uh, productive members of our society. Yeah. Okay. So do you want me to continue with this? Yeah, please. So um, I, I think cultural integration is not and should not be the job of the government. Mm -hmm. I think it comes through your personal choice, your personal evolution as a family. As we go from one generation to another, you let go of a few things and you adapt a few things and you form this new hybrid mutant culture of sorts, right? And that's what makes sense to you. That's what makes life easier for you. Mm -hmm. The problem with, culture, with, with the term cultural integration is this, that it basically dismantles and discards the very hip word, multiculturalism. Because it's actually an attack onto that, and it's it's basically it's a it's basically forcing in monoculturalism. Mm -hmm. The current melting pot. Yeah, because yeah, exactly. Because if 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 you want, because that's not going to be a good way to sell yourself, especially in this new, very trendy world that we're living in. That we want you to forget your culture and sort of adapt our culture, but that, but that's the problem, right? Um, I think I've spoken to Hassan about this before. Yeah. The, the biggest problem with the methods of choosing of governments with cultural integration is, the, is this is this misconception. And I, I love Eric. You already you 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 not Eric. Sorry. Sable. 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 You already touched upon this, which was fascinating. The the methods that the government starts these days is this. So if Naman is coming in to Finland, and I want you to culturally integrate, hmm. and I'm just using these very uh, precise metaphors here. If I if I'm, if I'm want you to adapt, I sort of assume that your culture is what? It's the clothes that you wear, yeah. right? And I can maybe eventually convince you that you need to just let go of this, and wear my clothes. But the problem with that is that your culture is not the clothes. Your culture is your skin. So I can keep changing the clothes onto you, but the culture remains because that's a narration that you bring with you. Exactly. That's a narration that makes you live and understand the world around you. Yeah. So there's literally no way that you can have someone lose their culture and become part of another culture. No. The only way that happens is that they themselves choose. Exactly. Okay, I don't like this, or okay. I don't like how my parents acted this way, so you know, I'm going to change and I'm going to be a different parent to my children. So, yeah. 
Uh, that's a very good point that you have raised. Uh, but my question here is, uh, do you think that if you socially integrate into, let's say, Finnish culture, and you can also, uh, your culture can coexist with the Finnish culture? Absolutely, yeah. So, 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 the, so that's two different terms, yeah. right? Because mm -hmm. I, I perfectly believe that there has to be and there will be social integration. That's how a society works. It mm -hmm. has to be cohesive. But I do not believe in cultural integration mm -hmm. because I don't think that happens. Mm -hmm. The only way for a society to exist with all of these different, mm -hmm. you know, flavors and tastes of people is mm -hmm. that everyone is allowed to live, you know, according to their cultural definitions. So some really interesting thoughts and. In my perspective, when it comes to culture and biology, I believe that culture and biology live in a constant co-evolution, so, mm -hmm. that uh, coexist and co-affect each other. And when it comes to these governmental organizations that want to do these kind of integrated things, they throw the biology out of the window. Absolutely. And what worries me because it then. Um, uh, utilizes uh, then these integrated practices on the immigrants, but it also affects the native population mm -hmm. because uh, the immigrants, in many ways, uh, don't see their surrounding society and surrounding people as their own, but they are coerced to experience that they have. You have to feel so that they are mm -hmm. your own, and the same goes with the native population. Mm -hmm. And if anyone objects, there may be a hell to pay. Mm -hmm. uh, which worries me in many ways because, um, especially with Finnish people, we are very grumbling type. We don't necessarily always like to say things out loud, but when we are all alone or among all each other, then we kind of silently create our teeth and mm -hmm. uh, then we, And it's kind of like this uh, <coughs> pressure that builds up over time. Yeah. And it creates this tension between different ethnicities, different people. And again, that's not productive in my opinion. It's in some way uh, it's a new colonialism that affects everyone. Wow, yeah. that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. That's a very and that's precise actually, thing that you said. This has actually been worked on recently as well, because this is called oh. the new colonialism. So you need to read up on this. You know, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I've seen certain examples of this neo-colonialism by certain non-governmental organizations that are funded by governments and corporations that strive to put all the people in this single basket that they, we are all one, one people, yeah. mm -hmm. no differences at all, and everyone can be anything they want and identity can be bought. But, but, but mm -hmm. isn't it a problem then? <clears throat> so we're in this one building, right? And you have your own way of living, obviously, a whole finished way of living, and you're more inclined towards having your space, and you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I come and live in, you know, the, the apartment next to you, and I'm more communal, and you know, I've, I've always invited neighbors over, and you yeah. know, take a photo, right? Uh, when, when we're living in this setting, and there's these opposites, right? I mean, I would be just rushing in to meet you, and you sort of want me to stay back. How how would we how how would we cater to that if not for the government to intervene and sort of bring both of us somewhere in between? Mm, one would think that um, there are some people may think maybe the more libertarian types that uh, governments may role is just to keep the peace, and maybe that is the perhaps the first steps that uh, what are the most efficient way efficient ways to keep the peace, but also uh, ensure that these communities if need be, cooperate in a productive manner. Yeah, yeah. And I think the most efficient ways at first is to establish boundaries. Okay. Many people are afraid that this kind of parallelism uh, can again juxtapose communities and maybe make them act against each other. But if we can establish goodwill and separate people in a way that they are not uh, forced and coerced to cooperate, but co cooperate out of their own will, mm -hmm. I can feel that that would be much more productive in the long term. You can be slow process, but this is be about everything immediately. Yeah, but won't that result into some sort of <clears throat> class system or some sort of, you know, grouping? 
and that that becomes a, a form of identity uh, as well. Of course, the, 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 as the very social hierarchies. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But uh, in my mind, uh, I feel like these kind of social hierarchies in many ways are inevitable. Uh, they cannot be avoided. But of course, if we can make certain soft ways to ameliorate, uh, I wouldn't immediately object with that mm -hmm. either. So that's my two cents about that. Okay. Mm. I think um, uh, because the discussion is uh, getting very interesting, uh, but I would like to add some a little light sort of things into it. So uh, since Norman he came, <laughs> <laughs> come on, <laughs> <laughs> why did he something about me? <laughs> 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 better way, he's just sitting in silence. We're going to move the discussion towards him. <laughs> okay, so cut. Uh, so I'm going to. <laughs> Going to ask. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to um, ask Noman mm -hmm. because since he arrived um, here, it's been like one year now. Yeah. Um, and uh, because, uh, how do you feel that coming from uh, culture of Pakistan mm -hmm. and culture of uh, Finland, mm -hmm. have you feel any? Cultural differences or social differences? Yeah, obviously there's a huge difference in. Uh, so if we compare the culture of Pakistan with India, so there's a like great difference. For instance, in Pakistan we are very communal. Mm -hmm. We want to meet and greet, and we are very social. Yeah. On the contrary, in here in Finland, yeah. people are quite reserved. But having said that, I feel pretty good here. Uh, as I made so many friends here, mm -hmm. so it's not if you compare the friendship between people in Pakistan and mm -hmm. in Finland, it's like apart, 180 degrees apart. So, mm -hmm. so you have to adjust, you have to make your peace with the differences. So, mm -hmm. if you make your peace, then it's fine for you. Mm -hmm. So, at the end of the day, it depends on you how mm -hmm. you try to integrate it. Mm -hmm. So, same with my, but could you? You know, educate yeah. us because this is very interesting. You, you, you're painting a picture of you know these 180 degree differences, yeah. and yet you somehow have a success story. Mm -hmm. So how did you? How was this? So, if you stick to uh, your behavior in Pakistan, then you won't gonna succeed here. So you have to analyze how things are working here. So you need to see how people are communi communicating here how the trends are here, so then you need to integrate those trends into yourself. Yeah, but could you give us more something specific that you, you believe you changed and this is, you know, this happened and this is awesome? Yeah, so like when I was in Pakistan, yeah. so the friendship there, like I used to go to my friend place and without even asking them or anything. Okay. So you know the deal there, yeah. right? So you just go there in the weather, you just call and you know, come outside and stuff like that. Yeah. But in here, it's not the same. So, for instance, initially you have to wait, right? So I didn't just go to someone and start talking and just meet up and stuff like that. So, okay. so you just start slow yeah. and eventually you make that uh, synergy or camaraderie with that particular person. Yeah. And like for instance in Pakistan, you you have that connection like if we say in five days, but in here you, it will be like twenty days, thirty days, maybe two months. So it depends on the person at okay. the end of the day. So it depends on you how you analyze the situation okay. and you get that why you get that feel when it's right time to go to the second place, I say, <laughs> you invite them to your place or you go to their place. So okay. it takes time and there's no fixed formula, there's no fixed equation that, oh, okay, after 20 days, this guy will be my friend. So, this will, you no, know. So, so what you're saying is that it takes you five days to go to second base in Pakistan. Yeah. That's <laughs> okay, so we, uh, because uh, most of the audience we have is yeah, from Pakistan. Just this <laughs> so, uh, because we most uh, most of the audience we have is from Pakistan. So, uh, and also the Pakistani community in Finland. So, you guys is a living example of a good friendship between a foreigner and a Finnish native person. Uh, there are many people who think uh, a person, a Finnish person, is hard to approach and it's hard to make uh, 
uh, to be a friend with a Finnish person. So what do you guys think? What like I said, most? it depends on the person. Mm. So it's okay. really rare to find a person like Simo. Yeah. Who is always up for something adventure. Is and it? it depends what you guys have in common as well. Mm. That's the basic thing. Yeah, but so, uh, can, we, can we have Simu's opinion on yeah, us as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we hear you making a difference, making yeah. a change into yeah. how you would approach people. Yeah. Okay. Right? And you know, being more patient with yeah. you know, yeah. sort of expectations. Mm. Uh, how about you? You making friends with Finns and then having someone from Pakistan come over who's more different? Um, if you want a precise answer, it might take a little while. But uh -huh. I'll buy it. <laughs> so, um, it's again related a little bit to my personal uh, spiritual reawakening. Okay. Along with early acclimatization with uh, foreign people, uh, most best example is Furkan. Yeah. When I used to uh, exercise in the gym, uh, there was this uh, other uh, exchange student working out there constantly. And we began to ex exchange, uh, it, it's always slow be Finnish people or foreign people. Uh -huh. uh, usually in the gym, uh, you meet constantly strangers and with uh, little interaction, oh, we meet this, oh, we don't have with that, we you know, not here, we yeah. can thank you. Uh, day by day, you start a little longer and longer conversations and suddenly you, you will speak with each other to your straight. Okay. Mm. And once I saw Numan interacting with Furkan, uh, mm -hmm. I kind of got an idea that this maybe kind of similar kind of dude. And with my uh, personal development in morality, I also developed that constant, be constantly helping people. Uh, always be ready to help people. And as I remember, was it uh, Byron from this course where Newman didn't have a little problem. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. even got that yeah. until yesterday with this Byron from these courses and with his coding problems. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like to help him. I like to help people. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mm. So that was the, it's always a slow development. Okay. And because even with Newman, uh, there was always a little bit of uh, doubt in myself. Uh, uh, is this a really a swell guy? But it's always uh, conclusions develop slowly over time. Okay. okay. Uh, is this a good guy? This may be a good guy. Okay, this is all right. Yeah. <laughs> How do you define a foreigner being a good guy? That's a really good question. Uh, for Finnish people, yeah. uh, one of the most important things, or well, most important thing, is trust. Mm -hmm. And trust is not something that you get just like that. It mm -hmm. takes time. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about where it is, uh, Pakistani friendships that uh, form very really quickly, uh, I have a doubt in me uh, how superficial are they then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good question. Like, people tend to be warm, of course, but uh, like passionate relationships, they burn out quickly. And okay. um, could could it be something like that? So my answer to that would be: there is definitely a degree of superficiality because there has to be five mm -hmm. places to this. <clears throat> but I think we are more open to be vulnerable mm -hmm. towards people, and I think it's very difficult but in my experience you know to sort of break the hard shell of a Finnish person it takes a lot of time to prove to that person that you're just worthy yeah and um, that's very interesting because uh, this is a very interesting aspect where we can actually bring maybe certain evolutionary aspects okay. into this uh, evolutionary psychology as you can see that uh, Finnish people over the course of history have lived very sparsely. Absolutely. Many village communities, but still, again, in their own um, family units and relatively not that much uh, interaction with each other compared to like some uh, southern Asia, where population density is so much higher, you have also have to have so much more toleration to yeah. people. Absolutely. But again, if you want to have this good uh, village co cooperation that everyone knows each other. There is the necessi necessity that everyone knows you. Uh, you have to be a uh, straight up guy. Mm -hmm. And you have to develop that trust with people. And because uh, you rarely meet people, you also, there is the trust that develops slowly and you are less open. 
That could be one example. I don't say that this is the ultimate explanation, but one perspective. I mean, yeah, I mean, if, if you're trying to explain Pakistan, then maybe it's because there's so much self, there's so much reliance on the other person, mm -hmm. because obviously the government and the state, they're not as you know, efficient in working and helping you out. That, you know, you're more open to receiving help, you're more yeah. open to being open and saying that, okay, this is where I need your help. And the other person also knows that, okay, if I help him up with this, you know, he or she, they, they help me up with something else. So we're, we're more open to that. Um, but, but, you know, I, I recently, this is, uh, this is interesting that we, we're talking about this. Um, a, a friend of mine, he's Finnish, and uh, he, he's been hanging out with me constantly for the last two years. And, and you know, he's just, he just finds it's you and he just stays away. And he's like, and, and I, I really understood him as a very close friend of mine, yeah? Mm -hmm. But then the other day when I was talking to him, and, you know, we were just a bunch of people and it just, you know, happened to be that we were talking about close friends, right? And uh, I was, you know, they asked him, okay, how about, you know, we do, how we have close friends and everything. And I, I, would, I would admit that I was sort of expecting that he would really talk about me as well. Yeah. But he didn't, he didn't. But he, he spoke about his friend from school, who he basically meets once a year. But still, his definition of a good or close friend is that person who has been with them uh, since his school times. And now I sort of make sense uh, of what of, of his answer through what you were saying, mm -hmm. that he has spent all that time developing that trust. Mm -hmm. And somehow, I st I, uh, if, uh, about me and him, we still have to go a long way for him to sort of develop that trust, even though for me, it's been like, of course, man, what are you talking about? I'm mean, supposed to. That's obviously unfair to the other person, right? Uh, you could say. Uh, well, here we go back then, uh, to the question of. Uh, the whole set is going to be done. How about the conception oh, yeah, so of fairness? And actually, the. Medium budget size set, too. If we take a little step back uh, from the moral aspect and think about the uh, idea of fairness, because you can be as fair as po possible, and possibly you can be dead. Uh, of course, I didn't expect that I would die when I go to so, yeah. visit Numa, but there's this uh, primordial feeling inside of me. Well, what everything was wrong? I mean, <laughs> the, the, the unknown. And it's a uh, very primordial feeling that uh, you kind of feel that maybe it is quite more prevalent in Finnish culture as well. Is it primordial or is it more socially integrated? Yeah, but then it comes to the question that is it just uh, this. Um, social construct, or is it more of an evolutionary thing? And think about maybe this, uh, it is a little bit of a biological aspect of, that is enriched in Finnish society. Could it be? That's one interesting question. Yeah, I mean, that's something that, you know, we can think about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But maybe uh, if you uh, kind of <clears throat> want to introduce yourself to Finnish people, maybe you have to be Quite a tactician. Yeah. Question the introduction and strategize that at uh, the time intervals and maybe yeah. a little bit shorter yeah. time frame. Yeah. Shorter time frame. Mm -hmm. so, uh, here's the thing, right? I mean, so this is recently happened, and mm -hmm. this is just recently ongoing. These are, these are my colleagues that have been with me for like four or five years. Mm -hmm. yeah. Teachers first, now colleagues. And uh, I recently actually spoke to them about this as well. Uh, you know, it, it's it doesn't go beyond just meeting someone at the coffee room and over there you get to exchange a couple of sentences mm -hmm. and that's it or you go out for lunch maybe once in two or three months you know mm -hmm. as a group and let's have a lunch together but it doesn't go beyond that it doesn't go uh, you know because uh, okay I, I would hear uh, my colleague you know would uh, he or she they would talk to me on Monday Ah, uh, Sunday was so difficult, you know, I was all alone, I mean, you know, I had to move all of this, you know, yeah. I had to do this. And they, it didn't come to them that, okay, just you throw a message and maybe someone's free and they'll help you out or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, and this, this brings us back to the different definitions of maybe friendship or, or different expectations of how and when I or someone else is worthy enough to be trusted mm -hmm. comes in. And I think for me, it's 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 been just like a constant thing, you know, where I I have to just keep changing it and keep, and then this time I really got, 
uh, I sort of got angry this time, you know, because I, and, and then eventually when we started talking about this, mm-hmm. I had my Finnish colleagues themselves also express this, that they also seem to be uh, feeling that just, you know, we're just stuck somewhere. We're not going beyond that, you know, there's some sort of power dynamics, there's some sort of hierarchy, there's some, there's some sort of rules that, you know, stop us from becoming more, you know, more, more like a well-knit group. And no one really knows what that is. Mm. Uh, that's maybe one aspect that we necessarily can explain what we can feel. Okay. Yeah, that, that can be then um, very difficult to dissect. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, uh, but when it comes to my relationship with Numa, it's more like um, well, I have been a little bit, always a little bit outsider in Finnish um, uh, circles as well, mm-hmm. and that's the uh, because my bad tendency to think too much in depth into things and very openly talk about them, especially yeah. the topics that are very taboo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have this very mm-hmm. again perverse tendency to <coughs> uh, provoke certain people and the tendency because you know women tend to be very conscious about their uh, rights and whatnot, and I like to sometimes poke a little fun around it. Yeah. But that always uh, <coughs> shuts me a little bit out after okay. I finish the service because <laughs> I don't talk about the more nice things nicely and superficially and I tend to go a little bit too in depth. Yeah, yeah. But when it comes to Numa, Numa is a little bit outside and I uh, sometimes can very openly speak my mind to him. Oh, that's mm-hmm. interesting. That he is outside of these circles and I can impart my own ideas and experiences onto him. And sometimes, uh, last time we met, I spent a little bit too much time just going off tangents about these things. Exactly, we just spoke for like four hours, just sitting straight four hours, no use of cell phone, no TV, no anything wow. else, we were just talking, 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 and we were superimposing each other, each other. Like that's fascinating. Also. So, yeah. in, in this case, because you said that he's an outsider, do you get, is it is it more about Noman being more receptive, or a better audience, or is it about you feeling a new degree of freedom to express yourself? There is a little bit that, uh, a little bit of freedom because Numan isn't the only person that I open my uh, mind to. Uh, he's uh, very uh, openly uh, ready to receive everything that I'm mm-hmm. willing to impart on him. And maybe sometimes I'm a little bit annoying that he isn't con- uh, objecting to the set of my yeah. certain beliefs because okay. uh, I like a little bit spice in conversations. As well. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I also experienced many Finnish people get very angry, like uh, banging their fists on the table and yelling at me for expressing my viewpoints okay. and yeah. whatnot. Mm. Mm. It has its own importance there as well. Okay. Mm. Interesting. But uh, because Finnish people are also uh, stuck in certain axioms, mindsets that uh, I feel uh, a little bit repressive in their own openness to accept oh, yeah, absolutely. And I think these ideas are not inherently Finnish either, but they are more like these many very secular mindsets. Exactly. The yeah. secular mindsets are always about openness and I, uh, my many ideas are very openly against many more uh, modernistic or postmodernistic ideals okay. yeah. and then they get very angry. But when it comes to Newman that I share with this that uh, he is very accepting and not very that judgmental either. Yeah. So okay. that's interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. That I can uh, be more open with foreigner than uh, this open minded Finnish individual. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I I I read this so many guys before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I have, yeah. So there are very certain very strong established taboos in yeah. society. Yeah. And do you think that Finnish society mm-hmm. or Finnish culture has changed you over the time period that you have lived in Finland? To some extent, are you do, have you adopted some things uh, different from the Pakistani culture? Uh, or have you adapted some things that some things that are good in Finnish culture or your mind state has changed to some extent because of the culture in which you are living? Do you think so? 
I think it's again extremely complicated. It's, it's, I think I came to this country at a very interesting age mentally, mm -hmm. where I wasn't insecure about who I was. And that allowed me to be more conscious about the things that I wanted to carry forward and the things that I didn't want to carry forward from the reality that I knew was the reality back at home. Uh, so my engagement with the Finnish environment, it basically nudged me to better prioritize the things that were important to me. Mm -hmm. uh, that I definitely found similar across the two countries. Things that were the same, yes, but they were being done better here in Finland. So I stuck to that and learned or educated or trained myself to the Finnish way of doing it. Uh, while simultaneously it also really reminded me of things that, I, that were really important to me mm -hmm. and things that were extremely opposite to what I saw there and existed here. And the sort of world that I wanted to live in, I ended up growing more closer to things back at home just to not be just because now I could see that okay, if that's not the case, this is the case, and this is not where I want to be. So I just out there. So I would say, yeah. I mean, it's it's it's. I, I wouldn't say that I've I've adopted anything Finnish in in this uh, in the time that I've lived here, but but I think I I'm I'm lying because I wouldn't lying and not lying because again it, it's not Finnish. And it's not Pakistan, but it's a new thing, it's a new form. See, this is a, synth, hybrid, a combination, yeah. a hybrid, a mutant. And that has been something that I've given birth to and I'm living with. You know, that's very interesting. Mm. Mm. Do that's actually uh, something, because I am constantly have been thinking about this uh, Finnishness and Finnish identity. And one thing that I started thinking very few very important to me is uh, <clears throat> protect, protecting a certain um, uh, Finnish ways of life and identity and ethnicity and the current political and cultural climate uh, I feel is a big threat to it because if anyone can be Finnish then eventually no one is mm -hmm. that, that's where it scares me and it's not bad only for the Finnish people, but also those people that come into Finland that they are forced into this synthetic idea of Finnishness. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That they just wave the flag and sing the national anthem and that's it, you're Finnish. I mean, it makes mm -hmm. absurd. So one of our courses on integration strongly advised us do not hug the Finns. They hate it. And my five years, I've met so many Finns who just love getting hugs, man. So I think it, exactly what you said. Even, uh, even, even I would like to add something here. For, I think for this, for the guys, uh, I think there there is a barrier. If you hug them, if uh, they will feel that there is some sort of you know homosexual feelings. No, I'm sorry. Is, is it homosexuality or is it is it more like you're not you're you're supposed to be more manly and not be this expressive? Uh, but of no, course, there is a certain Finnish macho culture as well. Yeah. But I think. Um, uh, there are many other ways to establish a physical contact with Finnish people, and it always it is a handshake. But even handshake can carry very quite a lot of meaning. Give it a firm handshake, direct eye size, even tap on the shoulder can mean very much. Do you guys like the drama of handshake? <laughs> <laughs> we may like it a little bit too much as well. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, but. Um, even uh, eye contact, yeah. uh, handshake, um, yeah. Finnish people always have a little bit of a tendency for direct eye contact as well. But, my, but my, my point of that was that, as you said, there's people who vary, even within the friends, yeah. who have yeah. different openness to being hugged. Mm -hmm. But by teaching the the new people you know, to, who are integrating this one type of fan, you're also imposing it onto the, the other the fans. Mm -hmm. That you know, okay, this is what a true fan is. So if you're open to hugs, 
you know, this is not what I was what I was taught. So yeah. what's wrong with you, man? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's something that you just have to uh, live with, uh, try and feel. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Try yeah. out. Uh, yeah. How do you say like trial and error? Yeah. yeah. Learn, yeah. learn with the you know, just yeah. different experiences. Yeah. 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 So. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not thinking. I'm thinking of any other question. Yeah. Okay. So one question that I have always been thinking to ask from a Finnish person. Uh, so the Finnish kids are very very cute. So, but people told me that if mm. you uh, if you are going in a grocery store, for example, in Pakistan, if we feel that uh, if a kid is very cute, we'll go to them and. Uh, you know, um, you know, touch mm -hmm. their uh, cheeks and uh, yeah, paint yeah. their cheeks. So, but we are quite uh, when we see a Finnish cute child, we are quite afraid to go and touch them because uh, their parents are maybe very possessive about it. And we have been told this that never go near a Finnish child. Oh, I can imagine that so that they if, so? if you're a parent and you can yeah. see some foreign person kind of pinching your child's cheek that you're Heart skips a beat, like, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this is what we just spoke about, right? And because, again, assuming that the other person is a predator, mm. the absolute worst, yeah. is problematic. Assuming that, you know, this guy, this random guy who's petting your dog is feeding him or feeding it something poisonous. Yeah. I, I understand the caution behind it. Mm. I understand, and this is what we were speaking of before as well, that prevention is better than, you know, cure or whatever, right? But assuming the absolute worst of someone beforehand, doesn't that increase untrust and you know all of these feelings of action and antagonism amongst the society? Yes, it can. And maybe one of the best examples of this distrust that has developed over time is a certain subpopulation that has been in Finland for what 500 years, and it is the Roma people, mm -hmm. uh, Roma people. Yeah. And they are these kind of people that uh, have a certain cultural tendency to do petty crime and be usually a little bit of general losers. Um, uh, there are certain uh, good people in there, but there has this uh, established stereotype and I don't want to sound very racist, but again, for good reason it has been established over time. Um, but I think that best way to establish that goodwill and trust is it will be it will take very long. Okay. It will be very hard process. And in this uh, current age where this is this very synthetic integration, that mean, I see that many Finnish people that always say that I love foreign people, I, I see that they say that just to signaling very superficially. They don't really believe in what they say. Um, I, I think that when it comes to forming friendships, it has to be genuine. It has to be meaningful. Otherwise, it will cause problems in the long term. Yeah, but we've already, mm -hmm. we've already reached this point yeah. where there seems to be a problem an incongruity of definitions mm -hmm. on how you prove your friendship, mm -hmm. loyalty to someone, how they're ready to receive it, yes or no, and what is the definition of that? So, so what? So that's that's. I mean, the problem stays. Yeah. I mean, because we were both talking the same thing. Yeah. But there seems to be a different definition of criteria and timeline of things, and how. And, and the only way out is obviously that you know both of us we have to meet somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. But this somewhere in between, is this really happening? And I think this well in my experience, of course it's a very simple <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> <It's okay. laughs> <It's okay. laughs> It's very subjective. But for me, I've struggled with, you know, finding this this median ground yeah. somewhere in, in the middle. Do you think that it will make a difference if, for example, if you are a Finnish, you are going to a grocery store and you find a Finnish child very cute and he or she is with her, uh, his or her parents mm -hmm. and uh, you will approach the Finnish child and tap his uh, cheeks or uh, never? Absolutely not. Uh, I learned to kind of uh, admire things at four. I, I like to look at the well-behaving little kids, they are cute, but I never go up to them and pinch their cheek or 
Yeah. So it's not a part of the Finnish culture, maybe. Uh, it's not even like celebrated in the Finnish culture because it's quite common in Pakistan. Yeah, that, but that's what I'm saying, right? I mean, that, that's the thing that, uh, and because I've been, I've, I've had these conversations, yeah. anyway, mm -hmm. thinking about what the parent is thinking, or what the pet owner is thinking, and mm -hmm. that's the instant thing. Mm. That it's the it might be the absolute worst, mm, yeah. and I think for us, which is also not very healthy in Pakistan, we have too much faith and trust that it's not that. And yes, it has to be somewhere in between. But I think I I, I find this very and you know I think this is what Hassan's trying to express as well that this is how, this is our love language. This is the way we express ourselves. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's such a cute baby and blah blah blah. And we feel frustrated as, and constrained on not being able to express that. So I think that there's a feeling of maybe hurt too. You know, if yeah. if all Hassan wants is you know wants to you know, you know yeah. uh, tell the parent that they have a very cute child and they're thinking that he's a, he's probably a predator. And that's a very interesting thing because um, there are many examples of these immigrants that are openly hostile against Finnish people and Finnish culture. Mm. And of course, there is that reason because they feel that the Finnish culture is hostile against them. Yeah, yeah. Because that mm. is the uh, in initial, maybe perhaps even natural distrust that is toward foreigners. Mm. But then, because uh, Finnish people then perceive this open hostility against us, then it reinforces. Of course, of course. Uh, uh, but again, one thing that I think is uh, not very optimal is again that when immigrants come, uh, we as well with them that, okay, they need to shut up, get some training, and go to work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think in our culture, there's a, uh, we have a prerequisite trust in someone, we call it Husnezan, then that person must be a good person. Maybe it's religious or something that we believe that the other person, we do not know any, no, anything about it, but still we have that it's certain a degree of they say Husnezan or yeah, I, I think, but in here it's totally opposite. Because yeah, exactly. Because because we're 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 grown, we're nurtured to believe that everyone is good. Yeah, that you know, be optimistic, and I, I can understand that over here it's the opposite. That's interesting. Optimistic because Finnish people tend to be very pessimistic. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Even I am very pessimistic. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's that's one of the things. Yeah. Mm. Maybe it's a lack of light. <laughs> I love I love this so so I, I Asan, do I have permission to talk about yeah, it? Sure. Yeah? It's, it's so funny. Um, I've been told by friends that yeah. uh, in winter if uh, no, uh, in winter if you walk across a bar that has a terrace, you see fence being stereotypically friends. So there is one my beer and you're not looking here and there but mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Do you want me to be there? No, it's not. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, so they won't interact with you, yeah? Yeah. But apparently in the summer, there's this... this the, the, I don't know, it's maybe another dimension uh, of this world. Yeah. Where there's these fans who will be sitting in the bar, you know, in the terraces of the bars. And yeah. you, they'll see you walk across, you know, they'll smile at you and they'll wave at you. Or when you'll be in the bus, you know, they'll come and sit with you, smile at you and talk to you. I'm like, True. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, I've, I've, I've seen so many summers here, Yeah, people don't change. So I, I, so, so I don't know, so this is interesting, right? Because most of the fans, maybe, maybe it's, it's, it's a way to understand, justify, rationalize mm. this way of living mm. that let's put it on the weather. And that's, again, th there's nothing wrong with that. We, all of us, we live in our delusions. We have our hopes and optimism, mm -hmm. which are based on just fantasies. But it, 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 but it helps us make sense of the world or our behaviors or the way we live. And this is what I've always been, you know, I've been hearing from these, you know, from, from my interaction with friends, right? That it's the weather, it's the cold, that's what makes you, you know, feel this. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I've realized that I, I don't change in the winter. I mean, uh, even though if it's dark or whatever, uh, I'll have a nice cup of chai and you know, just be laughing, you know, yeah. on things and everything, right? So I, I don't really think that the external conditions really make you a different mm -hmm. person and in the summer you'll be a different person. I don't know. 
I don't know. So, so this is something that I'm, I'm just looking. I hope that I can enter that, you know, different dimension, you know, <laughs> where the fans would just start smiling at me and, you know, they'll just wave at me and they're like, hey! Maybe it's the bar itself. Maybe it's the, maybe <laughs> some particular bar. Yeah, I finally yeah. have a beer. Now I can be happy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, if you want to understand Finnish culture, you, uh, even if you may not like it, you have to go away understand the alcohol culture as well. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, that that's that's so interesting. I, I you know he he was uh, uh, the five day thing. Uh, uh, it takes five days to be close to a uh, to a Pakistani. I think it takes yeah, one, day, one day one <laughs> day yeah. to get to get to really look into a fan. I, I wouldn't agree it's two months. I would if say one day. If he's drunk <laughs> and he, if he's in the sauna. He's gonna bear everything to yeah. him. Yeah. And so, so this is interesting, you yeah. know. Uh, I I can only be entertaining if I have alcohol in me. I can only be expressive sexually or otherwise if I have some alcohol with me. I can only be vulnerable if I have alcohol in me. Mm. This is dependency on alcohol. You, you see that there is the uh, culture and societal aspect that you restrict us. Mm. There are these certain um, uh, social and perhaps biological restrictions that we have established in our minds. But that's why you may then understand why we like alcohol so much. Mm -hmm. Get that, that little moment of freedom. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. But yeah. I think that alcohol, even at times it can be good, but uh, in many times it can be very bad as well. And Newman has experiences of that. Mm -hmm. Certain drunken things attacking him. Oh, I thought he was drinking a lot. <laughs> 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 yeah, I remember that when we were going to that bar oh, and yeah. that oh, drunk yeah. guy, yeah, 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 we were going to play pool and there was a guy who was just saying, Tupaka, Tupaka, so I know a little bit of Finnish, so I, I thought he was asking for cigarettes, so I said, no, we don't have cigarettes, and then he was trying to just push him, and we were moving forward and he was trying to push him, and, and uh, because, yeah, 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 and I was being told by someone, by a foreign friend of mine, by a Pakistani friend, and he said that um, even if you get in sort of a fight, a verbal or physical fight, uh, don't try to initiate it, just try to uh, yeah, at that also it. Do, what should I do? Should I just know? Yeah, no. so I said him to not do anything and we rushed towards the bar and there was a bouncer and that bouncer took care of that drunk guy. Yeah. Okay. So we are being told as well that even if you get in a fight, even for self-defense, uh, that should be your very, very, very last choice. Yeah. So mm -hmm. do not hit anyone. Uh, you you will get in hot waters. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we we feel that sh do law protect us equally as Finnish citizens? Uh, that's a very difficult question because uh, yeah. uh, I don't have that much knowledge about these court proceedings in relate to these cases. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to again Finnish mentality and how we are pessimistic and that negative ethnocentrism, mm -hmm. of course, first the blame game can go yeah. against you before yes. more information mm -hmm. is brought out. Yeah. So I'll, I'll give you, I'll put you in a difficult position. I was in a bus the other day, mm -hmm. and there was this guy who was extremely drunk, mm -hmm. and he was talking about uh, a football game, and he was really pissed off that they lost, and he had he had a vacation, and he had to go the next morning. It was Monday, and he was really angry that his vacation was ending with this. Yeah. yeah. And people were laughing and they were smiling and they were like, okay, But for me, it was an intrusion in the public space. The public space being the bus. Mm -hmm. A space where when you're sharing that space, you're not allowed to shout and you know just touch people or you know just invade their public right. spaces, right? But people were fine and open with that. <laughs> people will find it open. Uh, 
I think we can continue the discussion because it's getting very interesting. But the battery is low. <laughs> <laughs> like you have to speed up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like my low budget. So we can just conclude this or figure you speak it out because it's just okay. So here's the thing. So people were fine with that intrusion in the public space. Mm -hmm. So if we replace that person with someone like me who is speaking his own language and let's make it Arabic. Mm -hmm. Or he's basically uh, drunk in passion for God and mm -hmm. he's singing these nods or hums in the public space. Mm -hmm. He's also not really doing anything physically, much like the other person. Do you think the friends would react in the same manner if they hear someone singing Arabic? Uh, to be honest, I would feel a little bit disconcerting. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, in my experience, even Finnish, drunk Finnish people can be very disconcerting to Finnish people as well. Like in one time in a train, this one drunk Finnish person, person started to lecturing uh, me and another acquaintance of mine once while we are returning home from military service. Mm. And he was starting to get very physical in you know, a oh, closed space, yeah. very hit us. I think that. And when people start laughing, maybe they assess the situ situation that this guy seemed uh, yeah. not a risk and they spoke the language, we know this guy. Or we can immediately assess that this guy is not an immediate risk. Mm -hmm. They start yeah. the fear of the unknown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so uh, I think we can continue the audio podcast if you guys have, because the interest, uh, this discussion is getting very interesting. Uh, but we have to close off our video podcast. So thank you very much, Simu, and thank you very much, Essen, for joining us for our very first podcast. And me and my co-host, Numan. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, 